So today on the Dig Podcast, I am speaking to Sean Kavanagh from SCC Accountants and Sean speaks all things money. Money has scared the life out of me for my whole business journey and I am not afraid to say it and I know a lot of business owners feel the same. So I wanted Sean to speak straight to us about all things cash flow, VAT, um, proper ways to keep our books, online accounting, he's a great advocate for, he wants us all to go paperless. And um, he also talks about business development and how once you hand over the stress of the money to someone who knows what they're doing, you're actually free to be that business owner and that entrepreneur that that you know you are. So I can't wait for you to learn um, all the money tips and all the advice that Sean has to give on the Dig Podcast today. Welcome to the Dig Podcast. I am your host, Caroline O'Neill, and I love to discuss all things online marketing, managing money, collaborations, making that killer pitch and developing that product that will make millions, as well as so many other topics that will inspire you in your business. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of The Dig Podcast. It's my absolute privilege to speak to thousands of you each week. Remember, I love to know when you've listened, so screenshot the episode and post on social, tagging me on Dig for Success and Dig Mama, and I will reshare with my audience. I'd also love if you could leave a review for the Dig podcast on whatever your favorite platform is, Apple, Spotify, or YouTube. I love to see all your reviews. So thank you for being on the podcast, Sean. You're very welcome. Delighted to be here. Um, So I put it out in social that an accountant was coming on the podcast, and honestly, the messages just came flowing in. And I don't know, you probably hear this a lot, but most of the people that wrote in are scared of the money mindset and the money concept when it comes to their business. Is that something you would hear a lot? Uh, yeah, it probably is, Caroline. And it's probably something that maybe stems from sort of older, traditional ways of looking at accountancy. So when I, like, whenever I was starting out in accountancy, it was very very educational, very, very difficult to probably actually maintain a set of books and records and there's old sort of big red journals and, and massive ledgers that you almost had to be an accountant to maintain. Um, and I think a lot of the fear comes from that. Now, a lot, lot of people, you talk to my wife, she's probably not great at, at, at numbers and uh, whatnot. So typically some people aren't just comfortable with numbers, but I think the way that the world has moved on, it's moved on in so many ways, but I think accountancy is one of those areas that I've seen, in the, particularly in the last 20 years, that has really, it's really simplified itself. And um, typically technology has, as an IT platforms, has changed so much in our, in our lives and in accountancy and in bookkeeping. Um, anyone who's embraced it has, has, has been able to take that fear of doing invoices at two o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning trying to catch up with themselves and demanding themselves. So there's so much out there now that can help businesses mm-hmm. that the likes of ourselves are constantly probably trying to um, get people to engage with the, with the new technology. It can make their lives so much is- easier and, and that can actually allow them to sort of focus on the areas of their business that they can make the biggest gains because, you know, not everyone was um, born to, 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 to be a bookkeeper. I wasn't born to be a podcaster like you, so <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't be as good at it. So you know, typically we're trying to um, yeah, use what's out there to make, to make their lives easier. And... Yeah, when I'm listening to you, I'm like, yes, this is why I had an accountant all through my business journey and still do because I just want to hand over. He's good at it and I'm not. And But I still like to know the basics and I like to know what he's doing when I do give it to him. So I think a business owner will always want that knowledge. So that's why I wanted you here today. The first thing that I have on my list, and I suppose it's on my list first because I have a background in retail and a big part of the struggle of my life in retail was cash flow. Because of the way seasons went and your all your stock came in and nobody bought it till a certain amount of time, I struggled with that a lot. Have you any? Do you want to talk to us just about that topic and how businesses can take control of that? Absolutely, and and that probably is in particularly in, in retail where you're buying maybe three or six months in advance and trying to predict, and, and a lot of your cash obviously being buried in in stock on the seas and whatnot. I suppose. What, what typically we would try to always do as advisors is try to understand that first and foremost. You know, we try to get that engagement where we understand what you're buying and why you're buying it and the quantities that you're buying and, and sort of um, rationalize that that makes sense. But I suppose what, once you have that and you understand that, right, I'm going to have 30 grand that's going to be coming out of um, some supplier country and that I'm not going to be able to monetize for three or four months. 
and then you have to get the right funding for it. So, so cash flow typically is the one thing that will probably fail most businesses because if it's not, if you don't get the, the, the proper funding to match your requirements, um, and, and sometimes that can be difficult because sometimes banks get fearful. Sometimes they go into lockdown. They don't want to engage with businesses because they're not touching a certain sector. And you know, you can probably look at retail where it's at right now and, and a lot of the turmoil that has had to endure in the last couple of years with, with sort of high streets and, and a lot of people having to move into e-commerce and online. Um, you know, sometimes retail isn't, isn't the most um, attractive sector for the banks to support. So if it's not a bank, then it has to be an alternative organization. But I think the business owner has to, you know, typically a lot of what we will, we will, as accountants, we'll do the books. We will look at the margins and we'll say, yeah, you've made a 60% gross margin. You've made a 20% net margin. You're doing brilliant. And you look at me and you'll go, where's, where's the money? money? Oh my God. <laughs> and, and, and I'm constantly going, yeah, but look at all this look money you that you have in stock or the money that you're owed. And, um, but t- typically I suppose it's fundamentally, you have to understand where, how you, how, how your sort of goods are coming in and, and how quickly they're able to get monetized. And in accounting language, that's a working capital cycle. So once you understand the working capital cycle, then it's easier to probably accept that okay well at any one point in time i'm going to have 50 grand that's going to be sitting in stock or monies that are owed to me and if that's the case then i'm going to have to find 50 grand somewhere and if that doesn't come from a bank it has to come from an investor if it doesn't come from an investor i'm going to have to look at some other alternative form of of funding so if you don't set the business up properly from the beginning with the right level right 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 funding requirements um, it possibly will fail. And it might not fail because it's not doing well. It could be doing fantastically well, but the money just isn't appearing as quickly as the business owner needs it to appear to fund the growth. Because typically, if you do well, then you, you sell out quickly and you have to buy more and you need more money. And, and, you, and a lot of businesses get caught up in that sort of always trying to chase um, buying enough to, to fund that growth. And, and, but that, that typically, if you can identify that early enough, you'll always be able to, well, you should be able to find um, h- how you fix it in terms of what money do I need? And obviously a, a good advisor will show you how to get that. That's so true. And there's a lot of businesses listening in the startup stage. A lot of people listening that just have an idea at this stage. And I would urge them, just like you've said, to think about that issue because I didn't when I started in retail and that bit me every year and I never learned and I, I, I look back now wishing I had have educated myself more on that situation. Cash flow killed me every year and I, I was in my eyes a successful business and very you know it was very busy and 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 I was very proud of it and all but my god was I chasing my tail for money the whole time because yeah, yeah sitting in stock and it was, it was with me, but it was in the club and they hadn't given me the money. And it was just a constant circle, you know, so I wish I had known more. I think once business owners accept that and are able to, so, so we'll typically model out what, uh, say, a year's trading, particularly maybe the first year or two in business, that that's probably when businesses are at their most vulnerable. And there's a really scary stat out that so like 70% of businesses fail within the first year. And, and that's typically why they fail, because they don't have the foresight or, or maybe just, you know, typically you, you maybe rush into things. And, and if you're not getting the proper advice, you don't understand it. And, and if you can't see the money then available at the end of the month to pay your car loan or pay your mortgage, then all of a sudden you go into some sort of a meltdown and, and it gets it, it becomes a big issue. But but once once it's explained and once it's kind of modeled out, even a very simple sort of money in, money out, sort of one page Excel spreadsheet can kind of settle the business owner and, and, and they then know what to expect. And once they know what to expect and they've got the appropriate level of funding, there's no nasty surprises. And I think with anything in life, Karen, I think it's the uncertainty and that drives that fear. And, and once you strip that back um, and the business owner is settled, then they're allowed to go and, and, and do what, what, what makes them great. I agree that. I know. And then the other, that word that I'm about to say to you gives me the heebie-jeebies, VAT. <laughs> so VAT, what, what, like, a lot of, like, there's a lot of people that I would be out with, businesses and stuff that are just starting up. They don't even understand what that is. Yeah. What is that, Sean? <laughs> Why do we have to claim that? Get it back, give it back, claim it back. I'm like, what is this but, about? That's a great way of the revenue getting money out is of a it? business. Right. Uh, I don't Caroline. really uh, understand it. I get look, it, it, and and it's such a minefield that in that there's no really one size fits all. There, there genuinely isn't. I wish there was because mm. it'd be so much easier. And I think that's again that that's what the the difficult part with most business owner is is that no one can tell them. 
um, for sure, uh, like uh, exactly the way it should be done. But you can plan for it. You can. Um, so, you know, some businesses will be selling multiple products. A shop can be selling bread that doesn't have that on it. But, you know, the Java cake one's probably the best analogy. There's a whole court case around whether a Java cake was a biscuit or a cake. If it was a biscuit, there was no vat. If it was a cake, there was going to be vat on it. So there's lots of these legal battles that happen in the background. Um, there was one a number of years ago on hot food and cold food, and that was affecting shops. So you'll have lots of businesses that have sort of multiple um, percentages of VAT, whether that be 0%, 5%, 12.5% in hospitality at the moment, it used to be 17.5%, it's 20%, it's 23 in the South. So all of a sudden you have all these moving targets of numbers. Um, and, and I suppose the, the, the most important thing, well, firstly, that, that they're on the right VAT rates and they're charging the right VAT rates, but it's cash flow carding again. Mm -hmm. So if, if, you, if you get the VAT piece wrong from the outset, um, it can cost you money. That, that's, that's a danger. So, you know, typically we'll always be working with clients to try and work out whether what they're selling or, or what service they're providing, whether that is valuable or not. If, if it was children's clothing, there's no VAT on the sale of children's clothing, clothing but on, on the sale of adult clothing, there is. So I think it's always very important to, to work out what the business is doing and whether there's going to be VAT on, on, the, on, on what they're selling. Um, and it, 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 it really comes down to how they are buying and as to whether it's beneficial to them to say register for VAT earlier. So the, the, the revenue dictates that once you pass uh, a threshold of £85,000, you have to register for VAT. You have to be making quarterly returns or monthly returns at that point. But for, for, for a number of businesses, it actually makes a lot of sense for them to register a VAT earlier than that because they're able to get refunds maybe on maybe they bought a piece of equipment or maybe they've bought a building that has VAT on it. Um, and it can be used as a good way of, of, of getting refunds. So there's a lot of businesses that I work with that their cash flow is highly reliant on on getting refunds of VAT. And, um, you know, a, a good tip sometimes is that whilst, whilst the revenue uh, will dictate that um, most VATs are a quarterly VAT, so every three months you, you put in a return and you'll get a refund back, you can actually go to revenue and say, you know what, I'm because I'm taking refunds, I want those quicker and I want those on a monthly basis rather than a quarterly basis. And, and that gets their money back quicker. quicker. And all of it really just feeds into... Um, is my cash sitting with me or am I going to have to pay it to HMRC? So it, it, it's part of that working, working capital, that cash flow cycle that I spoke about. Um, most important thing to know is if it's done right, um, you, it can be a, a good advantage for your business. If it's done wrong, it, it can really suck your cash flow and, and create nasty surprises at the end of every quarter where you're having to make a phone call to someone and say, by the way, do you know you owe 15 grand of that? And they're oh going, my God, I don't do have you have to money. make those phone calls, Sean? <laughs> because I, I remember getting them. I'm like, and I always went, I guess, oh, what? I didn't know it was that much. And I'm sure that's the response you get from loads of people. Yeah, like. but yet, yet, yet again, I suppose, with. With bookkeeping systems and, and things that people are going to... People should be aware. People should be aware. Call. So now, it, it used to be the old way of doing it really was, you know, bundle everything into a plastic bag ah! and fire it into account and the accountants sort of panicking and see the Tesco bag coming at them. Uh, and, uh, but look, nowadays, it really should be a click of a button. Uh, at any point in the day, you should know roughly what that, 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 that you may have to pay out or you may be due back if you're lucky enough. And I, it was interesting there you said about the, I didn't know you could do monthly returns, which makes sense that that would help you get money back in. So maybe there's businesses listening who didn't know that. So that's good information for them. And I, I was going to talk about another topic, but I'll come back to this Soul Traders Limited Company because I wanted to jump to not the Tesco bag, the, any apps and cloud, uh, like cloud software that people could use because I was a Tesco bag woman for 12 years. Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed <laughs> to say that. But flip it, I probably am still a Tesco bag woman, actually, I'm thinking. But my poor accountant, but I use invoice to go now yeah. I, I most recently and i find it very good but me and you did talk before we came on our what ones do you recommend or what ones have you seen your clients use well for managing that bookkeeping yeah well typically caroline like for me it's trying to simplify the process for the for the business really and, and the business owner um and and 
personally, and, and uh, we, we, we use them all, but personally, the probably easiest one that I found is, is Zero XERO, which re really b breaks it down from you know, typically what, what is bookkeeping? It's money in and money out of your bank. Um, Zero tries to, it has the language and functionality that makes it really simple for money in, money out. And, and what it does, it, it, it links to your bank account. So your business bank account automatically drops in the transactions that it has into this bookkeeping system. And then you decide, it, it comes up in a left-hand column for money in, a right-hand column for money out, and then you decide where to categorize that money uh, as to what it was. Was it a sale? Was it a, a, a loan? Did I make a car repayment? Was it a purchase of stock? Um, but, but it makes it really simple. And, and, and what you can then do is, is Zero has a, uh, an app that, that then links with it called HubDocs. And HubDocs effectively is, is a, an app that if you get a... Uh, I fill a diesel in, in a in a petrol station. You can take a picture of the receipt, and it drops straight into your zero system. So you can tear it up, fire it in the bin, um, and 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 with your invoices, it can be scanned in. Um, I'm a massive fan of paperless, and I know I'm constantly trying to get my businesses businesses and clients that I work with to try and engage with paperless because. I think the, the sort of freedom it gives people and being able to have that discipline that you can take a picture on your phone. I think most people nowadays has a, a camera phone and, and, and uh, maybe most have an access to a scanner. So via um, HubDocs or there's another one called Receipt Bank, um, those things just magically, you take a picture of them and an image and they just drop into your system. And at that point, it's, it's one click of a button and, and they disappear into whatever category that um, they belong to. And then that, that allows you to click a button and run your profit and loss account, tell you how much profit or, or, or loss that you've made or, or what expenses. And um, it's just a great way of, of keeping all your money ins and money outs and simplifying the whole process because like for, 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 for so long, when that, when that technology didn't exist, um, you know, you're having to key in, you're having to, maybe people writing down in ledgers, um, keeping the Tesco bags that stuff was getting lost or the kids were running off with or, or, or a dog was eating it or something. So um, to, to, to be able to take control, typically what, what, what we find is that we spend most of our time trying to speak to the business owners to, to make their lives easier, to say, you know what, don't dement yourself, take a picture of it, let it drop in, it's 20 quid a month or whatever it is, and it'll save all those late nights, it'll, it, it, it makes our lives much easier, it'll be cheaper because you're not having to pay bookkeepers or accountants to do sort of, you know, data, bit, data input, that's, that's what most of it is. So there's lots of these apps that, that has all the image recognition, it'll, it, it automatically drops in the date of the receipt, the, um, who, who you paid to, the amount, the VAT element, all of that drops in automatically. So all you're having to go into your system and just hit a wee tick and it just disappears. So it, um, quite often we will, clients will say, well, look, maybe, maybe that's too much. Um, I'll not be able to handle that. And we'll say, you know what, trial it for a week. It's free to trial. Mm -hmm. And uh, 95 times out of 100, um, they'll come back and say, yeah, that was amazing. That's made my life so much easier. And as an accountant then as well, it, it makes our lives easier as well. So we're not having to charge as much um, for the business. And we're allowed to sort of spend our time in the areas that make the most gains because like, you don't know many hours I'm spending punching this stuff into, into a system. So if you know the stuff's already in the system, you know that I haven't spent my time there and I'm able to sit down with you and properly sort of talk about you know, how you can improve your business, how you can drive your sales, how you can reduce your expenses. And that, that's ultimately where I think accountancy will end up going and bookkeeping will go in. I think um, we're at the early stages of like artificial intelligence and, and all uh, like some of the technologies that are, that are out there um, really in the future is going to uh, make everything just go digital and, and we're all going to have all the sort of legwork taken out of things. And hopefully, I think that's a good thing. We'll be able to spend our time Either with the Telling kids, us how to make more money. Either with the kids in the park, <laughs> making more money or enjoying our lives somewhere. So that. You know what? When you're saying all of that, I, I think it's about discipline on the business owner's behalf, isn't it too? Like you're saying that's a very easy system to use. And like I'm a pretty au fait person with technology and all, but why do I still keep the Tesco bag? Because it's just like creating a habit that I need to get into the habit of taking that picture, isn't it? Absolutely, isn't it? And, and that's all it is. It's, it's two it's seconds, and, and I think as, as most as most people now are more comfortable, like like a lot of apps that we now use are take a picture of yourself or take a take a picture of something. Um, so it is, it, it's a habit, it's breaking it's habit, habit of lifetime. I, I saw my parents, they, they used to use that Tesco bag mm -hmm. and, and this is the way it is, but um, 
once, once you engage and embrace with the te technology, you'll never go back um, because the amount of people that I've, I've seen it happen in so many times and people will come back to me and go, I'm not sitting at two o'clock doing invoicing, mm -hmm. two o'clock in the morning doing invoicing. God, I've got time to take my kids to football or to go to the, go to the park in the evening. So it, it's really about just making lives, making people's lives much easier and, yeah. and, and taking that sort of stress and fear of accounting away from, from the business owner. Oh my God, there's only so many businesses listening. I know this. So it was zero Sean was talking about. And we'll put it in the notes that are part of the um, description of the podcast so people can see exactly what it is. But um, I'm going to I'm gonna do it. Sean. Yeah, and, and, and look, there are other ones. Me. Obviously, Siege has come out <laughs> yeah. with a competitive version of it. And there's QuickBooks. And mm -hmm. so like, yeah, I personally like zero because I think it's mm -hmm. easy to use. But there's lots of others as well. Karen. I use invoice to go to create yeah, my invoices. Invoice, yeah. And I really like it um, as a invoice keeping thing. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Connect, we work with it like too. Like the way you're talking about. It's, it's probably not as um, functional and yes. advanced as some of the zeros yes. or Siege's or QuickBooks. But yeah, invoice look, I, I suppose the, the most important thing is that the business owner is using something that they're comfortable with and that they're going to embrace because there's no point us throwing in a system and them not engaging with it sure you're mm. gaining nothing at that point you still have your tesco back walk about with it anyway under my arm i know i know so i want to go back to what i was going to talk about was sole trader versus limited company so a lot of businesses in their infancy are like sole traders and then they come across this instance where like oh should i be limited oh should i be limited sooner oh too late so, or, you know, I should have done it. Um, what, any advice around this topic? Yeah, look, this is something that, that we probably deal with every day in, day out. And the, the, dating historically back, uh, like people didn't embrace probably limited companies 10, 20 years ago whenever I was starting out in accountancy um, because it was quite onerous. You had to fit in loads of forms and then to get, if the business, say the business didn't succeed, then trying to get rid of the limited company was more forms and more hassle and there was just, there was just, 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 just too much too much admin to go with it and company secretarial stuff that, that, that went with a limited company. Nowadays, a lot of it's done online. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of, of, of the limited company. Why? It's because it protects the business owner. You know, it, it, it creates a, a legal structure that if, if the business was to fail, no one can touch you as an individual or your family or your home. And ultimately, that's what's important to people, Caroline. So, you know, um, it, it, it's very easy to set a limited company up. It gives that element of credibility, obviously, that, you know, if, if somebody's doing a bit of business and, and there's a limited company there, some people can see and go, all right, well, I can see them on company's house. They're real. Um, that's their address. So I, I now trust them more. And I think that's something that, that, that I, would, I, would, I would often try to convey to my clients is that you, you always have to remember everyone's watching you nowadays and, and company's house has a lot of information that, that everyone is watching and everyone's seeing accounts going in. And sometimes that will make ner business owners nervous as well because then they're going, okay, if I go to a, a limited company structure, then a small page of my accounts is, is, is visible with company's house. So if sometimes people don't like the fact that People may be able to put two and two together and realize, God, they're doing well or maybe not so doing so well. Now, th there are other options out there that you could have an unlimited company, which means that you don't have to publish accounts. The most important thing about it, without going into the, the nuts and bolts of it, is that you're in a structure that you're not going to get pelted with, with tax really turning because the... the the, the feared scenario really that we get is that someone will start out with a sole trade business and um, not totally understand that if they start earning profits of 40, 50 grand, that then they get pelted with 40% tax. So that's that's a scenario. And, and, and quite often, if you're not really engaging with your accountant or your advisor and you don't really understand the system and it's a year and a half maybe, so you start the business today and you don't do your first accounts for a year's time or a year and a half time, then your accountants come back to you and go on, oh, by the way, you've got X amount of tax and a good chunk of that's at 40%. With a limited company, you're always guaranteed a rate at the moment. It's, it's at 19%. They did talk about going back to 12.5% to align with Ireland's cor corporation tax rate, but you're guaranteed you're not going to get taxed any higher than that rate. Mm -hmm. And that's that sort of security that you're not going to get hit with the, with the real high rate of tax and, and also that you personally are protected that that's that's why i, I like limited companies in, in, in a lot of um in a, in a lot of cases the dig podcast is all about educating my listeners but it's so important to me that it is also a place to gain exposure each week we open up the podcast to brands and business owners to pitch to you guys my name is louise Kahn. 
business owner of the known getaways i am delighted to sponsor series four of the dig podcast and be featured as one of carline's guests Benoon Getaways is a luxury resort based on the Causeway Coast, walking distance from Benoon Beach. It has spectacular views of Benevena Mountain and the hills of Donegal. We are open all year round for that perfect beachside escape. The resort consists of six unique luxury glamping pods and two self catering holiday homes. Four of our pods come in their very own private hot tubs. All of our pods have personal fire pits and our guests can enjoy the amazing chill and grill barbecue hut. Take advantage of getting the family together or even a group of friends and book an unforgettable stay. Our resort is in the heart of Benone, close to an amazing activity centre, mini golf, surf school, walking distance from a bar and restaurant. Benone Getaways is a great base for exploring the north coast and visiting the top tourist attractions such as Mosadon Temple, Giants Causeway and many more. Just an hour's drive from us is both Belfast and Derry slash Londonderry. And we are only five minutes away from the Loch Foyle Ferry, the gateway to Inishone. After a long hard day exploring, pop open a Prosecco and gather around the fire pit or soak in your very own private hot tub. Benoon getaways can cater for all occasions, including birthdays, anniversaries, hand parties and many more. Get in touch and create your very own tailor-made experience which can make memories that last a lifetime. Start your giant adventure at Benoon Getaways. Find us on all the socials at Benoon Getaways or on our website, www.benoongetaways.co.uk. Right, so um, that might make people start thinking because there are a lot of startups and they haven't done their first account yet and they're making money. And that could be a big... And it's very, it's, it's very easy, actually. So you could get a company set up in two hours, you know, so it, it's not a difficult process. It used to be a whole owners, but now with all digital signatures and scanned IDs and everything, it's very, very easy to get registered. Um, I'm not, not saying it, it, companies aren't right for everyone. Mm-hmm. You know, there'd be certain reasons. Um, it could be like a tax refund reason or something that maybe someone, if, if say a business was going to make a loss in its first year, say it had to invest in a massive piece of machinery or something that was going to create a tax loss without going into the massive tax laws if you've invested a lot of money in something that you can get tax deduction on um, you actually can carry that loss back to maybe before you started your business and maybe you had a a job somewhere and, and you paid employment taxes of 10 grand and there could be a way in which you can take those losses that you create in your business and take that tax back that you paid in your employment so you have to be a, a sole trade to do that so okay. yet again i suppose the, the important message here is you know have a chat with somebody that understands mm-hmm. this type of uh, an area. Um, but it, generally, if there's going to be profits and there's going to be really good growth and the business is going to kick on, I, I, I personally, unless there's, there's something else sitting that the, the, the business owner isn't comfortable with a limited company, uh, quite often it is the answer. God, there's going to be so many people making calls tomorrow. I can sense it. I know if you need to, but um, that's made things a lot clearer in my head anyway i've written down here expenses so i'm sure you see some rare receipts coming through and you're like ah you can't pay for that now but um <laughs> ladies who lunched in I know. oh god but why is it important to record on what type of things should people like general things that people might know about to record for expenses okay look it's it's, it, it, it's an area, yeah, it, it, it can vary. It, it, it does depend on the business. So, you know, I've, I've got clients that are sort of PR consultants and, and into marketing and, and media, and they're always going out for lunches in the most beautiful places in Belfast. And, um, are you hitting at us here? <laughs> <laughs> beautiful surroundings here. And I, that lunch was lovely. Uh, but yeah, look, so it, it really does depend on the business. You know, it's, I think the, the revenue terminology is like wholly, wholly and exclusively for the purposes of trade. So it depends what your trade is. Right. If your trade is you're out and about meeting people all day, those lunches and those coffees, absolutely. Uh, if, if you're an engineering business that you're sitting welding things all day, it might be more difficult. But I think, I think with anything, you're, you, like you, you have a, a, an element of flexibility to, to apply a reasonable sort of judgment to it. So, you know, it, it, is, it is that engineering man could be out meeting a potential new customer for lunch. Um, what I would always say to people is, is, you know, anything that you can connect to your business do put it through. Uh, you know, your, your accountant typically, um, if it doesn't suit, 
uh, your business, if it doesn't feel like you should be putting that through, the accountant will, will pull it out inevitably mm -hmm. anyway, Carolyn. The, the accountant will, will look at it and go, all right, look, you, maybe you've overstepped the mark. That shouldn't really gone through. Um, the Tesco's groceries probably weren't for the for, for the purpose of your trade or, yes. or, or, or that beautiful handbag you bought out of Louis Vuitton maybe wasn't essential for, for your business. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it comes with an element of common sense, but... Um, yeah, generally, like, and, and I suppose as people now are working working more from home and remote working, you know, there, there has been a, a greater scope then for putting through home home costs, and a lot of people have kitted out um, offices at their home, or maybe put an office in their garden, um, and and that probably has expanded um, the, the the likes of expenses that the working from home, the old working from home rule that you used to have to try and sort of apply a percentage of when you were working and and whatnot, but say uh, the way that people are operating now it probably has widened the gap but it is important that people are thinking about how the likes of cars are always a very topical one because um the the rules are changing very quickly on on, on what you can reclaim from uh, a tax deduction point of view in cars if you're burn the hole in the, in the ozone layer with a Ferrari, it's not going to be so good to put through your company. You might want to just claim a mileage. The revenue have like an approved mileage rate that it might be more tax deductible to claim a mileage rather than putting the vehicle through. Or if you're like me and you're driving an electric Tesla, then you're, that, that, that can go through the company and, and you're able to so get So here, this is the whole buzz now about and electric. That off it. Yeah. And yeah, so like the revenue always will have these, um, like, you know, they're, they're trying to incentivize sort of business owners into certain areas. And obviously the green and, and carbon neutral is a, is a huge thing at the moment. So it's a great time to buy an electric car. And um, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's very, very, very tax efficient, but also very commercially efficient as well. Mine's parked at an electric station there down the road. It's currently filling up and um, it's free. So <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, that's yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? It's a whole yeah, new like, yeah, concept yeah. that we're all going to have to embrace very soon. Uh, absolutely. And you're, you're seeing, the the, yeah, the fuel costs are going up. And uh, yeah, no, it's, it's so like, I suppose that the most important thing as a business owner is that um, they're not missing anything out. So a lot of business owners typically will come to us and, and maybe go, it takes a little bit of teasing out maybe to say, well, what laptop are you using? And they're going, hi, oh, but I bought that laptop three years ago. Uh, it's a MacBook. I bought it for three years ago for 1500 quid. And I'm going, is, was there fat on it? And they're going, I don't know. Does Apple charge me fat? And I'm going, yeah, they do. There's 300 quid of fat on that. Why don't you reclaim that through your fat and, and put that through your business? And you're going to get another, you get 300 quid off the vat and you'll get another few hundred quid off your um, tax. And they're going, but can I do that? And I'm going, of course you can, because the revenue allows capital items um, to, to, to come into your first year of accounts. And you can also go back a number of years and reclaim things that were attached to your business that has fat on them. No, so hang on, I did not know this. I'm thinking about my wee MacBook that's sitting there. I'm like, maybe... There you go, get yourself a tax deduction and advantage. But yeah, look, it, it does. It does. So like, that effectively, like, people are always taking things from their sort of personal lives and applying them to their business, you know, phones and laptops mm -hmm. and say home offices now become massive. And, and so there, there uh, and internet costs, all, all that there. So li literally it's, it's trying to look at, at what it takes to run your business. Um, and, and you have that obviously entitlement then to, to apply that, you know, sometimes there is an element of, of judgment and subjectivity to yeah. it, but um, they can do that absolutely, for you, absolutely a common sense approach, Caroline. Okay, cool. Right, okay. So we all need to look at that. And then I've written down here grants, a thing that some people know, oh, there's something out there I might be entitled to, but I'm just not sure. So what kind of tips and advice would you have to say about grants for yeah. people's finances? Yeah, look, people love grants. That's, oh. that's, that's, uh, that's the first thing to say. Um, yeah, look, uh, you know what, We're, with, frankly, with businesses in, in Northern Ireland, we probably have a lot of opportunities in the grant front. Um, I, again, it, it, it depends on, on who you're linked up with. And, and um, I suppose it's our job as, as anyone's advisors or accountants is always to give them the, the what what you're entitled to. Um, so we are, we're forever linking people in with the likes of Invest NI that has brilliant marketing grants. So if they're taking new new members of, of staff on um, to work on export sales outside of Northern Ireland, um, they'll give five grand an employee or somewhere in around that amount. So, you know, there's always lots of 
of opportunities at, at, at sort of local council levels. All the local councils will, will, will offer their own sort of grant opportunities. Um, so, you know, there was one in Mid Ulster there for, I think it was a marketing grant for three or 400 quid. But typically, there's, there, if you look at the council levels, you'll always find stuff for marketing, maybe for IT upgrade, for upgrading premises on High Street. Um, they're, they're forever there, I suppose. It's, it's just being aware of um, how to get them. And like a, a lot of people I deal with just don't have the heart almost to go through the process. So like quite often we'll, I'll say to them, oh, look, there's, a, there's a two grand grant there if you want to complete that form. And they look at the form and it's 10 pages and they're going, ah, Sean, I can't even do my invoice in this month. Uh -huh. And that's typically then I'll say, right, well, tell you what, I, I'll, I'll do it for you because I don't want you to lose the money. So yeah. um, it, it is like there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of businesses that are really tuned into it and are doing really well. And, and the likes of Invest NI or Intertrade Ireland um, or any of those sort of local councils are forever. And there's like a DARD farm diversification, diversification grant that comes out every every once in a while. And they do like the, the brilliant pots of money there for businesses. So it's really being aware and, and having the knowledge that those exist. Um, and then hopefully then you'll, you'll, you'll be able to access them. But they're, they're always there for people, for marketing, for IT, and any business that are kind of looking at growth and buying a piece of equipment or um, trying to scale into, like, like obviously a, a lot of the sort of e-commerce um, stuff that people are now, you know, Northern Ireland businesses no longer have to wait for businesses to walk through their doors. They can, they can now go on to, you know, kind of your, Azos and on all these like beautiful IT retail platforms that are that are set up um, throughout the world and and having access to those the Amazon model is probably is probably the best one so you know those are export sales you're selling to the rest of the world you're using sort of Northern Ireland employees to sell the rest of the world that's that's the best I all over so you know there's there, it's really just having the having the knowledge to know what you're entitled to but there's lots out there. I know, I think businesses are traditionally not very vocal. Like I was out with a group of girls the weekend, we're talking about business and our different ones and, and we talked about Invest NI and I said to one of them, um, you know that if you're like, you know, you're posting your product like over like the UK and, uh, you know, Europe and all that, you, pro you would be uh, like a typical Invest NI customer. She's like, what? What? I could be an Invest I was like, yeah, you've been doing this for years and you should already be an Invest client and she's already... And another one of the stipulations is it maybe have to be a limited company as well. Quite often uh, Invest and I say, right, we have to be a limited company. So yeah. a lot of these sort of tips and, and hints maybe, you know, they, they, they all tie together. Yes. So, you know, but, but once you get things sort of set up and you, and you know what you're entitled to, it's, it's all, it should be quite easy from there on. I think know, businesses but. need to say, what am I entitled to? And then uh, not be afraid absolutely. of the process, yeah, and, which and, and not to be in, and like, There's a lot of people that aren't shy uh, mm. in coming forward and, and taking those grants. So, uh, yeah, look, and, and those those things, um, those wee 300 or 500 or 1,000 pound bonuses, they're, they're massive in terms of that. We talked about that, that, that cash flow. Mm -hmm. Cash flow is a thing that sucks the life out of most businesses. Mm -hmm. So ha having access to those re really just gives you that li little bit of oxygen that you maybe need just to, just to settle you. And, and you are just, just taking advantage of, of what you're entitled to, really. Absolutely. Um, so that brings us when we're talking about importing and exporting, like cross-border trading. I, this gives me the heebie-jeebies as well because it scares me all the different legalities now with like cross. And it's just got to be a minefield, hasn't it, recently? Yeah. But, you know, I know you specialise in that. Yeah, we do, Caroline. So, like, um, I suppose, uh, and, and, and where, so I, I initially started up in the Moy and you know, we're, I used to work a uh, part-time job in Monaghan, the Four Seasons Hotel. So I always had the cross-border sort of thinking in, in my head anyway. Uh, I always found it weird that a lot of people don't um, probably look at, at, at the access to the likes of the Irish market and, and whatnot and going down south. So, um, yeah, we set an office up in Dundalk and, and we have that linkage there. But... A lot of business, particularly with Brexit, Brexit really um, magnified the importance of of the cross border trading and and the businesses that kind of set themselves up properly that were able to maybe look and go, all right, well I actually do sell an awful lot into uh, Dublin or Cork or Galway, and I have people on the ground and they were maybe beforehand getting tripped up with um, lots of sort of like RCT rules, which is equivalent to the CAS in the UK. There, there's all these sorts of abbreviations and things that, that really can either um, lead to money being held back if, if people are selling to a certain market in, 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 in Ireland. Um, but if, again, if you, if you get the structure right from the outset, it can actually be a massive advantage. So I, I have a lot of businesses that since Brexit,
colleagues that have maybe looked at at expanding their business and set up like a subsidiary company in, in Ireland. Ireland has a, a corporation tax rate of twelve and a half percent. So now they're they're selling a lot of stuff from Ireland, maybe even into France, into Spain, into Italy. And I'm come back to them and I'm going, you know what? That is a great move. And they're going, why? And I'm going, well, you're now paying twelve and a half percent tax on all those profits that you're making. Um, as opposed to beforehand, you were paying 20 or, or 20 plus. So um, it can be a threat if, if you look at it in that way in terms of all the uh, hassle with moving goods cross border and whatnot. But if you know how to do that and you get that mm. property set up, um, it can also be a massive opportunity for the business. My mind's still boggling though, so I would still need someone like you or someone in that your field. Like you know what you know, and I know what I do. And most business owners, like if you're, yeah, you know, and, 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 and you know what, business owners don't really need to. Get, I know. They, they, they're probably only as as long as they know that, that there's they're not overpaying or, tax yes. and, and they're getting their grants and they're and, and things. I think it's it's that sort of that they're content that things are in control, that their business, all their finances are in control and there's nothing that they're going to kind of regret later. They're not going to look back and go, oh God, I overpaid tax. Why did I do that? That was silly of me. Um, or I missed out on that massive grant opportunity. So uh, all this really is just sort of getting your business on the proper sort of footing and allowing the business owner to, to, to grow it and drive it in the way they see fit. And that's what you do. Like I've written down here, like business development and growth is a big passion of yours because yes, you want to get the systems in place, but then you're all about how do we bring this forward, uh, right? Again, look, Karen, to be honest, I, I didn't I didn't go into accountancy to probably sit there and type numbers into a computer all day. Um, thankfully, now there's lots of systems that'll do that automatically for us. But uh, t t typically, I, I spend my time trying to understand the business owner, trying to understand what makes them tick and trying to understand what they're trying to get out of it. And, and whether that whether that means it's someone that, that does 100 grand at year one and is happy to do 100 grand year two, but are going to work two days a week, or whether that means that person wants to go to 500,000 or wants to go to a million pounds. Um, it's, it's, it's trying to help them sort of get out of it what they want. Um, and as, as, as sort of cheesy as that sounds, that gives me a kick. You know, the, the, the decision that I'm involved in that um, make, means they move into a new market and are able to grow their business, and their business now has been. Um, marketed and advertised on a global basis. Um, that, 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 that's, that's what I have the passion for. And I suppose I'm trying to get all, all our staff constantly to be inquisitive, to ask a question, to, to build those sort of relationships with clients that then the clients feel as if we're part of their team almost. Because I, I do believe that artificial intelligence will take over and do all those in data input and the number input and the number crunching all in the future. And, and what we'll be left with is, is a sort of society that... Um, relationships and people that you can trust is is going to be the most important thing. But that's part of the crack. That's 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 seeing seeing someone be successful is 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 is, is an unbelievable thing and and, and um, something to be like when you have that sort of passion for for someone's business. I think uh, you get a real enjoyment out of it. And great things can happen. And you know, business. You're kind of like a business advisor, a consultor, consultant as well as doing the numbers. But the numbers, if they're taken away by the artificial intelligence, as you talk about, you're going to be the person that helps. I just your business grow in that way, and that's unreal. Yeah, a, a lot of that really is. I suppose we. I, I'm in a fortunate position that I get to work with some brilliant business owners, and and, and you learn. Tell us about them. I've written down here client testimonials. So <laughs> tell us, give us an idea of somebody that you can tell us a little bit about their story and how they've grown. Yeah, no, I, I, I suppose like there's, and then you go onto our website, you'll, you'll probably see some some of our some of the clients we work with, but. Uh, some of them, I remember there, there's one that comes to mind that um, uh, it's, it's it's a builder's merchant, but I remember um, probably not not give the name, but I remember him coming to me and thinking, "Gone what what what?" Uh, this is a number of years ago, probably three or four years ago. And he says, "Look, we want to try and and uh, upgrade, uh, be more sort of retail orientated. I want to try and attract in a different because previously it was uh, maybe all sort of." traders and building construction contractor guys uh, and I remember saying I remember sitting there and, and the, the run along a, a sort of main road and I remember saying look why don't you put up a, a billboard why don't, why don't you why don't you you know to try and try and um, because 10,000 cars drive, drive past you every day why don't you try and uh, put up some real retail friendly beautiful stoves get the get the tone of your marketing of what what you have because I was able to see all the brilliant products that they have in in store but most people were intimidated to go into that environment because 
because it was full of vans and lorries. So very, very easily it was, it was I remember having a conversation thinking, well, why did you create, like, this isn't genius by any way, but the first month that the billboard went up, their sales went up something like 60%. And, and you're going, you know, something very simple uh, that probably it, it, it maybe takes someone um, a, a little bit from outside the business. So business owners typically maybe get caught up in the day to day and are always sort of chasing and are always trying to sort out lots of problems um, internally in their business. So sometimes having that having that cup of coffee just to sort of go right. Well, with someone who who isn't in that sort of a mindset can then throw out ideas that then um, can can have a massive impact in their business. So that one kind of comes to mind. But but constantly I'm, I'm, I'm working with people that are brilliant, a bit like yourself, on, on branding and marketing. And that's that's probably the one thing that I would say the best business owners typically understand, that they understand that you can have the best product and the best service in the world. But if your brand and your marketing and, and how people see your business isn't right, they'll never never engage with you you know it's, it's typically if you, if you go on to a business that has a website that hasn't been updated by in the last 10 years mm-hmm. it almost like freaks you out a little bit it scares mm-hmm. you and you're going right well i'm, I'm not sure whether you know, if they haven't upgraded their last 10 years what, what else uh, have, haven't they upgraded so even though that could be the the best business that you could work with so i'm constantly trying to um yeah w- widen our knowledge because we're able to take a little bit of that knowledge off the best people uh, um, that that we have and then apply it to others and, and constantly that's that's what we're trying to do so before we came on the podcast we were having a conversation me and you and the team here about influencer marketing and how that has changed the landscape for businesses so much and how it's actually mind-blowing the amount of like investment that businesses put into that you've seen obviously a big shift with your clients yeah. in that way too yeah and 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 the the great thing with that, Caroline, is that it's tangible. So yes. accountants love things that you can pin numbers to. Mm-hmm. So you know we work with 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 some really really big clients that that are able to tangibly link um, how an influencer brings in sales for them. So they, the, the the systems are built obviously so that reports can be run to say, uh, Caroline, big brought us in. Twenty thousand mm-hmm. pounds last month, and our margins on that is twenty percent. Mm-hmm. So we own Carolina Dig x x amount of pounds. So you know it's it's tangibly mm-hmm. able to be uh, quantified. So typically, ten years ago, I'd have been speaking, and still am speaking to people that are that are doing maybe television marketing, mm-hmm. um, and they're um, at the break at, at Coronation Street, and it costs them ten thousand pounds. And I'm constantly saying, "Well, have you have you have you earned much out of that? Do you see any bump?" And they're all going, "Yeah, yeah well, I, I couldn't do it without it." And I go, "Well, have you ever tried anything else?" And they're going, "No, but we're we're afraid to." Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the the great thing with the social media and the influencers is that it's it's there in black and white, and. Um, if, if, if obviously, you know, an influencer uh, doesn't achieve a certain level, then, you know, you can you can change it up um, and, and the terms can be can be changed. So I, I think I think the marketing and the power of, of social media and influencing is, is probably one of the greatest, um, great, great, greatest powers of a business that I've seen in the past number of years and that it, it's changed the face of marketing so much and um, but when it when it's done right it, it is incredibly incredibly powerful for any business absolutely and and I suppose the fact that you can then like some businesses will come to you wouldn't even be aware of the opportunities that are available so it's great that you're able to be an advocate for that to them which is brilliant um I oh my god like Sean I can keep going and going but I just I feel like that fear of money needs to lift off business owners, doesn't it, in order for them to be free to do, like you said, to do what they're good at? I, th- I think it's just taking control, Caroline, you know, that, and that, that's typically, whenever I first sit down with, with anyone, it, it's really trying to understand what 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 freaks them out, what, mm-hmm. what they're afraid of, um, and and then taking that fear away from them and saying, you know what, look, that's that's not a big deal. We can, I can, I can get that. I can get someone to show you how to mm-hmm. um, put those invoices onto that system. I can, I can, I can get someone to show you how to take those pictures, and those will drop straight into the system. Um, and and yeah, like I, th- I think the best advisors typically take that fear away, sh- show people what is possible. 
um, and, and, and then just allow them to fully focus on what makes them great. And, and, and that can be different things. Some business owners will be production oriented and will be coming up with brilliant products or efficiencies in their, in their workshop, whilst others then it's the sales and marketing. And, and it, it's just really, it's really simple actually whenever you think about it. It's just allowing them to spend their time where their time's best spent. If they're not a, a good bookkeeping person, then get a system in or get a person in that's going to do your bookkeeping. Mm-hmm. Um, the, 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 the business owners that maybe don't do that that I would work with, I would see them struggle and you're constantly getting those conversations of, oh, I'm demented, somebody's not doing something and then going, but you're not a good production person, get someone to manage that person somewhere else and you spend your time elsewhere. So um, yeah, it's only really when you make a real good connection with that business owner and, and they trust you enough to tell you everything warts and all then you're able to make the most difference in their business mm-hmm. unreal it sounds like you do such an amazing job for your clients and yeah, i try um, you know uh, no honestly like you came like loads of people recommended that you come on the podcast sean so and the fact that you've given your information so freely too is brilliant for business owners because we need to educate people but thank you so much for being on the podcast no, i hope this isn't the last thanks time for having me. No, we're going to need you back when all the the other changes come in i want to know how that tesla goes with saving your money <laughs> and stuff but um thank you so much for being on the dig podcast no. Oh, thanks for having me, Carly. Remember, if you do listen to an episode, screenshot it and share it on social. Remember to tag me so that I see it and I can reshare on my platform. I love to see everyone tuning in each week. It has been an honour to be your host. I look forward to our next episode.